All right. Good morning, everybody joining us today, and good afternoon and good evening to people from the rest of the world. Uh, welcome to our webinar on the sample gallery. Uh, we talk about reference code and best practices for Salesforce developers. Um, I'm Shashank Sivatswaya. I lead the I'm the director for developer relations for Salesforce, and I'm joined today by Satyashekar Chegundi and Aditya Nagdopalli, who are senior developer evangelists uh, uh, from Salesforce. Good morning, Satya and Aditya. Good morning, Shashank, and good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, Shashank. Hi, everyone. Okay, now let's keep going. Before we go ahead, let me tell you that uh, we might make some forward-looking statements about features that are probably not generally available. So please don't make any buying decisions based on what's not generally available. And uh, Make sure you follow us for updates on our new Salesforce Developers India Telegram channel and also the Salesforce Devs Twitter handle and Salesforce Developers Facebook page and the Salesforce Developers YouTube channel where we post all our recordings. And this webinar is being recorded as well. And the recording will be available uh, shortly after the webinar on YouTube. If you have any questions during the webinar, you don't have to wait in the end to ask the question. You can just post your question directly inside uh, GoToWebinar and uh, towards the end, uh, we will do a live Q&A session. We will try to answer as many questions as possible. And in case we don't get to um, the questions that you posted, feel free to go ahead and post them on our developer forums. Uh, also, we want to remind you that we are here for you and as the pandemic, the COVID-19 global pandemic uh, continues to impact us, uh, we hope that everybody's safe, everybody's taking care of your health and safety and your family's health and safety as well. And as we continue to uh, navigate this time, we are there for you and we are, we'll keep bringing uh, content for you to uh, learn from home as well. And if you want to learn everything about the Trailhead and Salesforce are doing to support the community, uh, please feel free to check out the URL link that we put there. Uh, it's a short code to uh, a blog on what uh, on where we talk about uh, what we're doing during these times. Uh, you can also feel free to take a screenshot of it uh, if you'd like. And also coming to uh, what we are doing during these times for the community, uh, we are doing the Level Up SF Dev campaign where uh, we're sharing content pieces with you on a regular basis and also connecting with you to Trailhead Live uh, once a week uh, to have some fun uh, while we are learning things about uh, Salesforce development. And uh, there's one coming up tomorrow, uh, so feel free to check it out. You can either follow the hashtag levelupsfdev or post about it, or just go to the URL bit.ly slash levelupsfdev to get all the information about this. And I'm sure it's gonna be fun, so hopefully see you tomorrow. And uh, agenda for today, we're going to uh, look at an overview of the sample gallery and we'll see the types of sample apps that are available and we'll walk through a few of them. And we'll talk a little bit about benefits and some updates and best practices and the roadmap for the future. So before uh, we go into the sample gallery uh, overview, I have a question for you. Uh, you will see a question poll appear on the screen right now. So I'd like to, we'd like to understand uh, uh, if you know about sample gallery previously. So I'm gonna launch the poll and it's gonna stay there for 60 seconds. Please feel, to, uh, feel free to let us know. The question is, so do you know about the sample gallery previously? We have all the uh, responses coming in. Um, I'll share with you towards the end uh, what the results have uh, have been. We are like 20 seconds more to go. All right, 
let's quickly look at the results. 35% uh, of you said yes, you heard about it, and 65% of you said you haven't heard about it. And that's exactly why uh, we are doing our webinar today. We want to give you an overview of the sample gallery, and we also want to uh, share with you what are the advantages and benefits of something like this. So let's keep going. Um, let's talk, let's see what the sample gallery is about. So sample gallery is a collection of, or a gallery of uh, sample applications, reference code and best practices that we build to inspire uh, Salesforce developers uh, to build on the Salesforce Customer 360 platform. And all these sample apps are open source. All the code is hosted on GitHub for you to easily explore, learn, and even contribute to. And these are updated pretty regularly. We continuously update them to incorporate the latest generally available features and any best practices that we find and we want to share with the community. So whatever uh, you, are, you are seeing at, at any point of time is usually uh, the most updated uh, version of the features and best practices that we want to share with the developer community. And it's also very easy uh, to deploy them if you, uh, if you're familiar with Salesforce DX, all the apps are in a Salesforce DX project structure. Um, so you can, you know, pull the code and push to any non-production org of your choice. Or you can also use uh, the unlocked package version of some of the apps that are available. Um, and we say uh, it's not meant for uh, non-production use because these sample apps are only intended for learning. So please don't deploy them into production. They will work by the same time. You don't want this uh, application in the production unless it makes sense. The intention of sample apps is, is to help you learn better. And uh, you can just access it very easily uh, on Trailhead. You can just go to trailhead.salesforce.com slash sample dash gallery. Or we also created a short code URL, uh, sforce.co slash sample dash gallery to get to the sample gallery web page, which hosts all the applications and links to the GitHub repos has some descriptions and uh, features of each of the uh, sample apps and stuff, which you will all see uh, during the walkthroughs. Or you can just do a simple Google search saying Salesforce sample gallery and um, the first result that shows up is the link to the sample gallery. So within the sample gallery, uh, there are uh, mainly uh, two different types of apps. And then there is also like a, a third type of app, which is similar to one of the types. So if you look at the types of sample apps, we have uh, the first type, which is the recipe style. So uh, recipe style apps are uh, a collection of examples of code samples, uh, code that is uh, code examples and samples for specific tasks uh, in less than 30 lines of code, right? And uh, each recipe app is usually dedicated to a platform feature, like we have LWC recipes, for example, right? And uh, they usually don't have like a fully functional functionality as an application. These are apps where you go in and get the code and you'll see or uh, understand more during the walkthroughs. And the second type is the standalone applications and the standalone apps are kind of dedicated to a specific industry use case. And these are uh, fully functional applications uh, which showcase uh, some of the highlighted features for each of these applications. So we take a, a bunch of highlighted features and we uh, implement them and showcase them in fully functional applications. Uh, whereas the recipe style is not, it's uh, just examples and the standalone apps are this, uh, this uh, type of best practice and uh, latest feature code working in a fully functional application based on a industry use case. For example, it could be like a retail application or an event management application or uh, it could be uh, like a community application for anything. And there is also other type of standalone apps called uh, uh, partnership apps, uh, where we sometimes build apps in partnerships with others. One example is uh, the Apple partnership that we do. And uh, within the types of Apple apps, what are the apps that we have right now? Uh, we have the LWC recipes uh, sample app. We have the LWC recipes, open source versions, uh, recipes uh, as a sample app and uh, in the recipe style. And in the standalone uh, uh, style, we have Dreamhouse, the popular Dreamhouse application uh, that's been there for a while. 
and we have Easy Spaces, uh, which is an event management app, and then eBikes, which is a retail application. And uh, Redwoods Insurance is uh, another app that we built in partnership with Apple. And each of them have like specific features that they help with. And uh, without further ado, let's go into walkthroughs of some of these applications. So I'm going to uh, hand over the control to Satya, who's going to now um, walk you through some of the applications. And then Aditya is also going to walk you through some of the applications and share more information about these sample apps. So over to you, Satya. Thank you, Shashank. Um, yeah, uh, let's get into the walkthroughs. So in this session, in the next few minutes, uh, I'm going to show you how to deploy and use the LWC recipes app, after which we'll also see the e-bikes app, and then Easy Spaces app will be covered by Aditya. And we are also going to describe the other standalone recipes and partnership apps like Dreamhouse, LWC recipes, open source, and Deadwoods as well. So let's get into the walkthrough of the LWC recipes. But before that, uh, most of the things are already explained by Shashank, but I would like to add a few more points to it, where LWC recipes is a sample app which helps you learn Lightning Web Components. It has uh, easy to digest kind of examples where you can find the examples for the specific tasks. And most of the examples are written in either 30 or less than 30 lines of code. And for each of the examples that you see there, you can find the source code for that example so that you can use it in your projects for your purposes. So let's go ahead and see how it works. I'm currently in the sample gallery page where you can see all the different apps listed. And here you can see the LWC recipes app where the, you can see the name here followed by an image, which was in fact taken from the deployed application. And there is also a description, a brief description, uh, which tells you about uh, what this is. This app is all about and what it covers and what you can get out of it. And it also shows you the features that are used in building this application. And you can also notice this pattern in all other apps as well, like eBikes or Dreamhouse, whichever app you open. So they all follow the same pattern. And in this style at the bottom right corner, you can see view on GitHub. If you click that button, it's going to take you to the GitHub repository. You can even click on the image here, which takes you to the GitHub repository. I'm currently in LWC recipes GitHub repository where you can see a standard Salesforce TX kind of project structure. You have access to the complete source code. And the good part of sample apps is, every sample app is uh, associated with a readme document which is well documented, well described, which helps you understand how to deploy the application and start using the application. For instance, in this LWC recipes app, you can see that I have three different options, choices of deploying the application. The first one being, I can install it in my scratch app. So I have all the steps. If you click this, you can see at the bottom as well, you have the instructions on how to install the application in your scratch app. If you just want to check the functionality, uh, but not the source code, then you can even do that by installing the unlock package. That is the second option you have. And the third option is if you want to use the app in your Trailhead Playground, or maybe you want to use it in your developer edition, then you have instructions for that as well. And the fourth table of contents indicate that you have optional installation instructions, which are a kind of very important to adopt the best practices. And we are going to cover more about it in our upcoming slides. So I have already deployed following the first method of installation into my scratch hog. And you can see I'm currently in my scratch hog where you can see different tabs in your recipes app. So there is a dedicated tab for each kind of feature on the platform. For instance, you can find all kind of hello applications in the hello tab. So you can uh, find here a hello component, a hello binding component, which can bind uh, a property of the JavaScript to the HTML element. And similarly, you can find other examples for Apex, data service, and so on. Let's observe this component uh, closely. If you see this component closely, you can see that there is a title. Each of the components in uh, LWC recipes are provided with a well-defined title, which uh, in fact uh, uh, gives you a meaning of what exactly that component does. 
and you can use this name to search the component in your code repository as well and then you can see the output of my component here in this case i'm just uh, printing hello world there that is output from my component logic and then at the bottom you can see a common uh, nature in each of these components like you no know, a common pattern where there is a brief description about that component and also a view source link if you click on that view source link it's going to take you to the exact location in the repository where that component lives so as you all know a lwc component is made up of a html file and a javascript file and there can also be a meta file which stores the information about the org so in this case you can see a hello component html javascript and meta file there so this is one way of getting into the code and looking into the code but i'm going to use the other way where i have a better control on the code where i'm not only going to look into the code but also i'm going to use the code modify the code i can do it using my id we can use any id for that matter but i prefer visual studio code id for the benefits that it provides it provides all the possible developer productivity features Currently, I'm in Visual Studio Code IDE. On the left side, in the File Explorer, you can see my LWC Recipes uh, uh, folder, Recipes project is open. There, you can see a folder structure, Force App, main default, which is basically a default project structure for your Salesforce DX projects, under which you can find different folders which hold different kinds of uh, files. For instance, Applications folder holds the Lightning application files, and Aura folder holds the other components. Similarly, our LW component, LWC components lives in this LWC folder. And then at the bottom, you can see the hello component. And you can open the hello component right from here. But there is one other easy way with uh, using which you can open the hello world component that is by using the quick launch. You can use quick launch by pressing control P if you are using Windows system or command P if you are using a Mac operating system. So with this shortcut case, you can easily launch the quick launch and you can type for the files which you want to use. For instance, I've typed hello and then I can open hello.html and hello.js file and then start working on it. In this example, you can see this greeting property is set to world and the same thing can be observed here in this components output that greeting property is set to world. So this is one example. As I said, there are other examples in uh, sample gallery like for Apex, data service. If you, are, if you want to uh, check how lighting data service is used and how you can create the record using lighting data service or how you to delete the record using uh, lighting data service, you have examples for each of those things. And you also have the examples for lighting web, uh, lighting based components and on how to use the base components. You have examples on how to compose one component in uh, another component, another lighting web component. And if you want to see how a child component in a composition talks to the parent component, then you have examples in child to parent. Similarly, you have examples for parent to child as well. And you have examples for components to communicate with each other, which are not in a hierarchical relationship. For instance, I'm in a PubSub component here, you can see I have three components, three independent components. When I search for a particular contact in my first component, you can see that contact is listed in second component. How is, it, how is this possible? This was done using the events, using the PubSub model, where the first component acts like a publisher and publishes an event, and the second component acts like a subscriber and subscribes for an event. We are going to see a better example of usage of this component in our upcoming uh, walkthrough for, for easy bikes. And there is, there is also a tab where you can see how a aura component interacts with the uh, lighting web component and so on and so forth. You have other examples to check wiring service, to check how third party JavaScript libraries can be used here, and also how to navigate uh, b between the pages. Like you know, if you want to navigate to the home page, how to use the Navigation API is also illustrated with different examples here. So recipes app is uh, a very easy app to understand where you can find uh, bite-sized code examples which you can directly copy for your use cases and start using it. So this is all about uh, recipes app. Now let's go ahead and see how uh, uh, e-bikes app works. So I'm in the presentation currently. And let me explain what eBikes app does. 
eBikes app is a sample retail app which uh, caters to the retailing application. So gen in general, if you take any retail application, uh, it has products, it has customers, it has resellers who resell the products. So eBikes is a fictitious company uh, which uses this application to create the products and also track the products. It also wants to create the reseller orders right from the application itself. So we have used different features to build this application. On the bottom right corner, you can see we have used Lightning Web Components. We have also used communities because when we are working in on an application like a retail application, then the people from the community are very important who are the customers who are going to use our application, maybe like a site. And then it also uses the Lightning Data Service and uh, composition where one lighting web component is composed in another lighting web component and it also uses rich graphical features advanced features like drag and drop where you can drag one component into an another component and we also showcase the publish subscribe model how these components talk to each other so after this walkthrough or after, when you uh, use this application learn this application what are your key takeaways you are going to learn how to build rich user experiences using your lighting web components. You're also going to see how easily you can integrate Salesforce communicate communities to your Salesforce org and how easily you can deploy it on your org. And then we are going to see how easy it is to deploy using our latest feature experience bundle, which is generally available from Spring, 19, Spring 20. So let's go ahead and see how the app looks like. So I'm in the sample gallery, as I said, you can get into the source code of the uh, e-bikes uh, right from the um, right from this style where you can click on this image icon and you can get into the e-bikes source code. So let's see how first see how this functionality looks like. I've already deployed my application. And you can see I'm currently in my e-bikes application page. There are different use cases that are covered here. So I'll try to cover a couple of use cases for you. So this is a product explorer. You can see it has three components. There is a search filter component. There is a product tile component and there is a product uh, detail component. For instance, I can search here for a particular type of bicycle and you can see it filters out. So again, as I showed in the recipes app here, we are using a pub sub communication model where this component is communicating with the other component. So basically you can copy the example from there, change that example to suit for your requirements. Not only that, there are other components in this uh, search filter component where you have one more component that is composed within, which is a filter of your price where you can drag and drop and you can see the uh, bicycles are filtered as per the, your choice. And there are other choices as, as well, like check boxes, uh, which you can like uh, with which you can filter the bicycles that you want to search. And uh, yeah, currently I filtered some bicycles which are less than nineteen hundred dollars. So let me select one of the bicycles, and you can see the details of the bicycle here. So this is the third component. Again, it's a pub sub communication that happened between these two components. And when I click on this uh, top button here. Uh, it is going to take me to the detail page. So I'm currently in the products tab. It took me to the detail page of that component, which uses another lighting web component called similar products. So these are a lot of components. There are a lot of use cases that you can go through and study, but I am going to show you one good use case here, reseller orders, which uses a rich graphical user interface experience. In this case, you can create a new reseller order you can uh, select different uh, resellers from here and save It's going to create an order for you, but I've already created an order. So let's go ahead and check how that order looks like. So this is the reseller order again. Here we have two components. One component is called as order builder and there is another component, which is a product tile search component or product tile list component basically. So here I can delete the items from my order or I can drag and drop the items and you can see whenever I drag and drop the items I can change the uh, quantity so this price is automatically updated and the number of items is also automatically updated okay when I save it let me save it you can see now the number of items is uh, five and the price is changing to twenty one thousand two hundred forty dollars 
So how does this work? So you can check each of these components by getting into the app builder by opening the lighting app builder by clicking the edit page. So in the interest of time, I already opened the app builder here. You can see these two components. If you see the very first component, I have search key here, which can be enabled or disabled. Again, these properties, this can be controlled by the administrator and these properties are exposed by the developer using the metadata file. Now, I can also drag and drop the component from this uh, product tile list into the order builder component. How does that functionality work? Let's look into the code. So I'm currently using two lighting web components. One is product tile list and the other one is the order builder. If you go here, uh, I'm currently in the recipes uh, app. So let me quickly switch to the e-bikes. And I'm here in the Evex application and it has similar folder structure like your uh, LWC recipes. And let's quickly see how that drag and drop functionality works. So here uh, we are, we have uh, a product tile, right? Where we are dragging the component from. So here in this case, we are using on drag start. Here we are not using any kind of third party libraries, rather we are using the HTML drag and drop API and we are using the proper attributes from there. So whenever we drag the component, for instance, if you see here, when we drag the component from the uh, product tile list, when we start dragging the component, then an event is fired. In that event, we are going to store some information. So on drag start, an event is fired and we are handling that event in handle drag start. If you see handle drag start here, so what we are doing is we are copying the product information, current product information into a variable, a property called product. So in current product, you have the information uh, such as like product name, URL and MSRP. So that information is copied into this product here. And on the other side, when you drag the component and drop it here in the order builder. So what happens on the order builder side? So on the order builder side, you can see that we are listening to a uh, event called on drop. Whenever something is dropped there, it's going to call it handler, handle drop. And if you see the handle handler for that uh, drop event, so it creates a order item record for you. It fills up all the information. And uh, finally, it refreshes your screen. So that's how we are able to see the information here. So this is one part of the e-bikes application where you can see the rich experience of using the application there. And the other part of the application is the uh, community. So those who are maybe new to community also need not really worry about the how to create the community and how to establish uh, the community users and all other things. It's all done for you with the latest feature, as I said, uh, the uh, experience bundle you can uh, create a uh, you need not really create the community in our sample app when you deploy your sample application e bike sample application is going to create a community for you how is that possible uh, here we have defined a property in the scratch out depletion file to enable the experience bundle once you enable the experience bundle there it's going to create a uh, it's going to enable the communities for you experience bundle for you and then when you get the information from already deployed community maybe from your sandbox you can use the metadata api or uh, and then uh, retrieve the information from there using the experience bundle it's going to retrieve the information in a human readable format and it is going to create a three layered directory structure for you for instance if you go here into my uh, file explorer you can see I have post app main default. It's going to create a three layered structure for you with the name experiences. And in this experience, you can see I have one community defined called eBikes one. If you have more communities, it's going to list other communities as well. And within the eBikes uh, one, you have different uh, folders. Each folder holds a specific file for a specific information. For instance, branding set holds the branding information. So all the files within these folders are in JSON format. So you can, so that you can easily control uh, the properties even before deploying your community's application into your scratch out. 
Similarly, in the config folder, you have uh, the uh, files for all your uh, pages. So now let's go ahead uh, and uh, let's go ahead and see how the community looks like. So you can launch the community from your Salesforce org itself, or you can even uh, launch it from the external URL. A site is automatically created for you, and the site URL along with user credentials are shared to your email when you deploy your community application in the Scratch app. So here I'll go to view all, and you can see I have one eBikes app, and there is another variation of eBikes app called uh, eBikes Community app. If you click this, it's going to open all the your community app where you can see a home page where you can see a home page here let me close my earlier one so here you can see a home page you have a product explorer product families which is very much similar to what you had in your uh, uh, the standard salesforce or application so you can see the same interface same filter same product type list let's examine the home application so you can in fact uh, use this code in your user uh, use cases uh, for your projects and you can also configure this uh, page by going into the experience builder so experience builder is pretty much similar to your lightning app builder right where you have the components where you can drag and drop the components into your page and you can configure the components similarly in the experience builder as well you can drag and drop the components and configure the components so on the left side you can see you have the components uh, menu where from where you can drag the components you can also drag and drop the custom components as well you have the standard components as well as the custom components you can also uh, customize the theme for your community. You can also change the page structure. You can also do uh, change some other settings for your community here. So for instance, when I over here, you can see I have a hero component that is used. When you click this component, you can see the properties of the component here on the right side. And this is this hero component is a lightning web component. And these properties are exposed from your uh, meta file, just like for any other uh, lighting web component there. And then uh, so here I added two hero components, one hero component, which has a video. You can see there's a video here and there is another uh, hero component that I've added at the bottom. Here you can see the properties of that component. We can see image and then you can also customize the button dynamically. For instance, here we have explore more. Let me say I type explore more and enjoy and you can see that that change is instantly visible in your uh, the community uh, site you can also preview that site from by clicking this button you can publish your site or uh, if it's already published you can also go to your site from here click on view ebikes is going to take your site now let's see how the code looks like the hero component is pretty simple so let us open the hero component here and if you see the hero component it has a image drag it is taking the property from your meta file and seeing uh, if the image image is set to true it's going to show off the image tag if video is set to true it's going to show off the video tag and then it's uh, going to show all the hero details information by using a composed component see hero details comp component which is composed within the hero component you are going to show all this you are in fact showing all that information from here so this is that easy to work with the sample app. So basically, guys, uh, eBikes is a pretty powerful sample app. I see some questions around um, the functionality of the app itself. Um, so basically, our intention of creating these sample apps is for inspiration um, so that you can directly copy paste some of the code. So, for example, uh, I love the hero component. Um, it was showing a video if you wanted it, it was showing an image if you wanted. So if that is something that you're looking for, um, let's say if you if you have a similar use case in your own project, instead of you building it from scratch or instead of you having to do a lot of Google uh, to find the relevant component, you can just uh, come to the sample gallery, look at whatever you want. You can copy paste the code and then you can customize it to your own will. Um, so it, it, it majorly serves as an inspiration um, is what I would say. Um, so with that, um, I would want to start showcasing the other sample apps that we have. Um, 
I'm going to start with easy spaces. Um, so until now you have seen a recipe style app or one of it. And the other one is a standalone app that is eBytes. Now easy spaces, um, it's a fictional event management company um, that creates and manages these pop-up spaces is what we call it. So let's say you have a cafe, you have a game room, and in case an individual or a company is looking out to rent it. Um, so let's say you're going for a team outing and you want to reserve a space. Um, so that is what Easy Spaces as a company is going to deal with. Um, now, this sample app um, is going to show us how Easy Spaces uses Salesforce in order to manage their reservations, how they manage their customers. And once a customer creates a reservation, how are they going to match the customer to the relevant space? Um, so that is pretty much the use case of uh, the Easy Spaces sample app. And what we have used some of these technologies uh, that we have listed below. Obviously, we are using Lightning Web Components. We are using Lightning Flows in this. And uh, from the screenshot, you can also make out that um, we are using the Lightning Console as well. Because typically, in order to reserve a space, maybe your customer, um, Easy Spaces customer calls them and they answer the call. So, I mean, a Salesforce Console is a pretty useful uh, kind of a ui when you deal with these service kind of uh, cases but uh, the most important uh, aspect of easy spaces i would say is unlocked packages and i want to talk more about it now one uh, salient feature of this and the other apps that i'm going to talk about is there is also an aura version available for this now e-bikes and lwc recipes uh, those two are pure lightning web component apps that have been built once lwc was launched but easy spaces dream house all of these apps were there around for quite some time which is why there is an aura version available for them as well and uh, what you're seeing now is the lightning web component version we are no longer maintaining the aura version by the way because we want to only roll out updates to the lightning web component version but you can still refer to the code of aura version and compare how we have migrated the code from aura to lightning web components so it's merely uh, we left it out there for that purpose we are no longer rolling out any updates to the aura version now we are just dealing with the lightning web component version so <clears throat> let's quickly look at the demo of the easy spaces app so first and foremost uh, we'll start at the reservation manager uh, which is one place where uh, the easy spaces customer service rep can manage reservations for both leads and contacts which means for the new customers and existing customers and what we have done here is we have used the same component uh, two times and this component is object agnostic which means if i pass lead as a parameter through the app builder it shows the leads if i pass contacts as a parameter it shows the contacts. so the same component we have reused it instead of creating a duplicate component because it has the same functionality so that is what uh, we call as object diagnostic components and it is one of the things that we can do. now if you click on one of these tiles uh, you're going to come up to a screen which lets you create a reservation for that particular lead and what you see here on the right hand side is basic customer info and some reservation details so you can uh, select the city where do they want the space for how many people pretty basic stuff now, but what's interesting here is, once you click on it, it is not just a web component that we are showing on the right-hand side. It, we are actually launching a flow, and inside the flow, we have embedded a Lightning Web Component. Um, so that is this functionality. I mean, uh, you might argue that technically it might not really be necessary uh, to launch a flow and then embed a Lightning Web Component in it. But like we said, we want this to serve as an inspiration purpose. So in, if you are looking at use cases where you want to launch a flow by passing some conditional parameters and stuff like that, you can look at this for inspiration. Now, if I click on draft reservation, it is going to create a reservation in the back end and then take me to the detail page of that reservation. So that is one part of the functionality. Now, once a reservation is created, the second thing that Easy Spaces does is match a particular space to this reservation. So for that, I'll go to the Spaces Designer. Again, here, uh, a two component layout. I have one component on the left, one component on the right. I select a reservation and then a beautiful UI appears on the right-hand side. 
Um, here again, what you'll notice is we have the ability to filter these spaces by different types. Um, so I'll select two or three types and then whatever is not matching my filters is grayed out. And whatever is matching my filters, I'm going to click on one of it. It shows me the details on the left hand side. I can just add the space to my reservation and finish my process. Now here I want to call out a few things. So here we are using kind of like a pill component in order to show uh, all of these spaces. Here we are using the tile component. Uh, on the reservations as well, this is called the tile component. Now there is a reason why I'm calling out these particular aspects um, because that is to do something with unlocked packages. Um, now, as you see, this is a pretty basic functionality. You create a reservation, you assign a space to that reservation and done. Um, but like I said, the real purpose of uh, easy spaces is to showcase unlock packages for which let's go to the um, VS Code instance. Now, first and foremost, before even going to unlock packages, I want to highlight that uh, we mentioned that we keep maintaining the sample app gallery with every release. And if you remember with the previous releases, you now have the ability to embed a lightning web component inside flows. Uh, that is what we have done. And uh, it's, it's pretty simple. Actually, you just specify the target to be a lightning flow screen. And what are all the properties that you expose um, as public that is with the act API decorator. Uh, it's the same properties. It's the same target. But what you'll notice is the role. The role is what defines uh, if the property is going to be available as an input variable or an output variable inside flows. Um, so I'm not going to go into too much detail because not everyone really knows about flows. I won't confuse you. But coming to the packaging. So unlock packages, uh, it really allows you uh, to organize your source code into multiple packages inside the same repo. Um, some of you might already be aware about something called as managed packages and unmanaged packages. And those are things that you generate in your Salesforce org. But unlock packages is something that you generate inside your source code uh, that is stored locally. Um, and the way you do that is there are certain commands that you run. But before that, I mentioned packaging means you're going to group all of your components inside your source code into different folders. So right now, if you look at it, I have four folders. And people who have already worked with uh, the Salesforce DX packaging structure know that the default folder is called force-app. But here I have renamed all of them and created four different folders called base code, base objects, base styles, and space management. And what really we try to do here is segregate the components in order to create kind of a layered approach. So for example, in the base objects package, I'm going to store all of my objects that are needed for the app. And in the base code and the base styles, I'm going to store all the reusable components. For example, if you remember, I was calling out a few things. The image gallery, uh, the one you have seen when I was assigning spaces, and the pills, uh, the one that you selected the filters for. So those are components that I can reuse across any number of projects that I can create, which is why I bundled them into the base styles folder so that if I create more packages in the future, I can just create a dependency for them. Now, space management is going to be my main uh, project, which obviously is going to refer to the components of all of these folders. Now, this is how you organize your folders, but how will you let Salesforce know that packaging has to happen for these folders? You do that with the SFDX project JSON file. It's going to be present with all of your SFDX projects. What you do here is you define your package directories. Pretty simple. It's already going to be there. You just have to rename a few things. Here, uh, most significantly, you will give you the package name. Whatever is the version name, you want to call it base object spring 20. And if you're creating a new version, you might want to name the version maybe winter 20. You give a version number, uh, pretty much um, standard uh, definition of a package. But what you'll see, the way you create dependencies is using the dependencies section of the JSON file. So here, my base code is dependent on the base objects. And base style is dependent on the previous two. Finally, space management is dependent on all the three. Now, the reason you create a dependency is because if you directly try to install the space management package, it throws an error saying that you need to install these three packages first. That is the sole purpose of it. 
Now, once you define your structure, uh, you're going to run a few commands, all of which don't worry, they are present in the readme file. I intend this to be only a high level walkthrough. All the detailed steps on how you do this, what are the commands that you run, everything is listed in the readme file. So uh, in the space management, you create your folder structure and then once you run the commands, basically you create packages. And once you create packages, those are going to come and sit inside the package aliases uh, node of your JSON. So your package is going to have an ID. And once you generate package versions, you're going to get new IDs for your package versions. So what if you look at this ID, uh, it will be very similar to the ID of the packages that you download from App Exchange. So what it really means is that once you download your packages, I mean, once you create your packages, you can just use this ID and install them in the production part. Um, so that is how it happened. Uh, with this package based and unlock packages kind of a structuring, you don't technically deploy your code to production. You deploy your code to a packaging environment. Uh, that could be your full copy sandbox or a staging sandbox or whatever you want to call it. You would create these packages there and you would only deploy these packages. Uh, rather, you would only install these packages in the production instance. So that is fundamentally how a package based uh, development is different from your uh, general source control development. Um, so that is what we try to highlight with easy spaces. I am not going to say anything more and confuse you guys. Um, but yeah, that is what we are doing with easy spaces. So definitely take a look at it on how uh, we are doing all of it and see if it is helpful to you guys. So quickly moving on to the other apps. Um, so like we mentioned at the beginning, we were only going to do walkthroughs for three of the apps. All the other apps, I just wanted to let you guys know what is a part of it. We are not going to do any demos for it at the moment. So Dreamhouse, uh, probably the oldest sample app. Um, I don't know for sure, but uh, this is an app that most of you should already be, be already be aware about because it's a part of many trailhead modules. Um, so if you've actively been working on Trailhead, uh, you would have already worked on the Dreamhouse app. And for this Dreamhouse app as well, there is an Aura version available. Again, uh, just serves um, to let you know how migration can happen from Aura to Lightning Web Components. As a matter of fact, the Aura version is also being referred to in a Trailhead module that deals with Aura to LWC migration. Um, so we are we are keeping both of the apps, uh, the Aura version and the LWC version. But like I said at the beginning, we are no longer maintaining the Aura version per se. Uh, so it's kind of like archived. All the updates will be rolled out onto the LWC version. Now, why did I call out Aura to LWC migration specifically for Dreamhouse? Is that we have also released a blog for this, which talks about how performance has improved in the Dreamhouse app once we migrated all of the components from Aura to Lightning Web Components. So you can feel free to read that blog. It basically states that once we migrated some of the components, we noticed up to a 67% increase in performance in some components. So uh, serves as an inspiration again. Uh, some of the features uh, in Dreamhouse like bot integration, Einstein vision, all of these are available only in the Aura version. It's not available in the Lightning Web Component version. So depending on what you want to look at, just go to the relevant repo, clone it, explore it, and then feel free to use it in your own projects. Uh, moving on uh, to the other app that is Redwoods Insurance. Um, so this sample app, it shows how a car insurance company is making use of Salesforce to manage their claim process. Now, if you remember, this falls under the partnership category because we have partnered with Apple in order to build a mobile app for this. So the mobile app is built using Swift and the Salesforce mobile SDK. And this mobile app is something that a customer uses in order to, let's say, raise a claim. Maybe their, their car, they, they met with an accident and they take a picture of their car and upload. And uh, the agent sitting at the back end uses the Salesforce console in order to manage the claim process. So that is the use case behind uh, Redwoods Insurance. But really what we wanted to showcase here is how you can use the mobile SDK and how you can use Swift in order to create these uh, native mobile apps which connect mm, to both Salesforce as well as to the native device. Um, for example, you want to access the camera and stuff. 
uh, how you connect to the device is what we wanted to showcase with this Redwoods insurance app. Um, moving on, finally coming to the last app um, that is LWC Recipes Open Source. Now, if you remember, we have already covered LWC Recipes, uh, which covers the recipes for the on-platform version of the framework. Um, so the Lightning Web Component Framework essentially is completely based on standards and doesn't have any Salesforce dependencies. For the Salesforce version, we added a layer on top of it. We added the wire decorators to talk to Apex and all of those. So Salesforce specific layers have been added on top of the framework. But the open source version is really a vanilla framework, a pure UI framework that you can use. Um, you can deploy it onto any platform of your choice. You can use any backend of your choice. That is why these recipes don't include Salesforce specific use cases. It just talks about how you can use Lightning Web Components off platform. And uh, Lightning Web Components has, you know, Salesforce, all of it. We move towards a single page application kind of a use case. And routing is essentially a very important part of single page applications. And there are many routing algorithms, many routing frameworks available out there. So we haven't specifically covered any of them in the recipes. So you can just go to the sample gallery, go to these recipes, and you'll really see that we are only talking about Lightning Web Components and nothing else. Um, so with that, I want to um, stop talking <laughs> and hand it over back to Sushant. Thank you so much, Aditya. That was amazing. And uh, thank you so much, Satya, as well, for the walkthroughs. OK, let me take back uh, control now. And it's time for another poll. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the walkthroughs. I hope you guys uh, uh, learned from the walkthroughs. Uh, these are just walkthroughs to give you an idea uh, of um, how this, how, what these apps are and how you can use them. So the question now is, uh, which sample app today did you like the most? Right. So let's launch the poll. And again, like last time, it's going to stay on for uh, 60 seconds for it to launch. And here's the launch. So the question is, which sample app uh, shown today did you like the most? Um, the options are LWC recipes, Easy Spaces, e-bikes. Or uh, is there any other app that you like better than any of these things? And when I when we say other, uh, we mean like uh, apps that are inside the sample gallery. Okay, the questions are coming in. People are starting to vote and the numbers are moving up and down. Let's keep it going for a few more seconds. We have 30 seconds more to go. Yep. 20 seconds more to go, guys, in case you haven't answered. Here's the question, which sample app would you like the most? I can just choose any uh, apps that you liked. Feel free to vote, uh, no pressure. All right, so we have the results and um, let's look at the results. So LWC recipes uh, is liked by 13% of the people, Easy Spaces by 20%. E-bikes is a very clear winner today. 64% of the people really like e-bikes and 2% uh, of the people like other apps. Um, absolutely, you should definitely feel free to check out any of these apps for what they do, understand them and learn from them. Okay, thank you so much and uh, congratulations to the winner, e -bikes. Okay, it's going back uh, to what we're talking about today. There are so many other things uh, that, are, uh, that are beneficial by learning about uh, Sample Gallery. Let's see if uh, Satya is available to talk about it. Uh, he, I know we had this internet glitch. Everybody's having internet glitches these days. Uh, it's the new normal, by the way. Satya, yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you, Sushant. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. That's great. Awesome. So, yeah, sorry for dropping from the webinar in between, but yeah, let's get go through the benefits of using the sample applications. The first benefit I can see is is going to act as an inspiration and a learning platform for us. It's the sample apps are not, uh, in fact, built for the production purposes. Rather, they are built to be different applications and the code 
sitting in there is going to be a reference code for you which you can copy paste in your applications so it's going to teach you what you can build using the salesforce platform and also how you can build it using the latest features of the salesforce platform the second major benefit i see is the it is open source which means the source code is available to you and it is posted on github you are free to download the code play with the code make your own set of use cases and if you feel like something is missing in the code you can also contribute you can in fact raise a pull request and those pull requests will be reviewed by us and we can merge those pull requests into the sample application and the other major benefit here is you get to learn and understand the best practices because all the sample applications are built in such a way that we have considered all the possible best practices and try to include it in the sample applications and the third benefit i see here is it is well maintained so whenever there is a release new release whether it is summer winter or spring we update the sample apps and not only that if we see some new feature very interesting and if you feel like that use case is missing in the sample application we try to update the sample app with the latest and the greatest features possible and then uh, there are other benefits as well if i want to list what are the recent updates you can uh, see the next slide there are few recent updates which we have done to the sample applications one is we have refactored error panel so there were earlier there were different ways of showing the error in all the sample applications but we have created an error panel for you so you're also free to use that error panel lighting web component in your applications if you want to throw some uh, nice SLDX, uh, inclu SLDS included errors on your screen. And uh, all the applications are updated with the SLDS classes so that we have the same similar kind of SLDS structure throughout the apps. And in the recent release, you can see that attract was not made mandatory. Earlier, attract was required in Lighting Web Components to make the property reactive. But now, all the properties are reactive by nature so attract is no more required so we have updated the sample applications by uh, by removing the attract for all the properties there wherever it is not necessary the major addition in the recent, recent release was uh, enforcing the security to the socle classes within your uh, to the socle within your apex classes and we also included that in all of our sample applications and you can see what is the best practice of using with security enforced in your uh, use cases as well and then we have also updated the community configurations you saw it in the e-bikes example where i have deployed the community application uh, even so when i even if i don't have knowledge on the community i can still deploy my community application because of this experience bundle which has human readable configurations so you can also change those configurations and deploy the application in your org and there are many more uh, examples i know with this webinar time is definitely not sufficient to list out all the possible uh, recent updates and benefits of the sample application but i think there is one uh, blog that has came out ancha can you uh, talk more about the recent blog on the sample gallery yeah um, so like satya mentioned you now there are like so many updates that we keep doing to the sample apps uh, that we can't really list them down on a slide so which is why we roll out a blog post uh, generally after every release that talks about all of the updates that we have made um so that that actually covers things in twofold which means you also get to know the latest features that are generally available and also you get to see examples of how we have implemented them uh, just to add a little bit about um, the SLDS classes to respect org density. So that update we were able to roll out because of a new feature called as SLDS validator, which is a plugin that you guys can download onto VS Code. And then it's going to show you um, all the refactoring that you can do with the style classes. I just wanted to throw that plugin out there so that you guys can install and make uh, great use of it. Now, Moving on. Yeah, things uh, like the SLDS validator and stuff like that. These are like very useful stuff. Uh, uh, many best practices uh, come out of using tools like this. And we always try to add things like this to the sample gallery and sample apps. So uh, maybe can you talk more about the best practices? 
Yep. Um, so it's not just best practices about how we implement a component, uh, whether we are using the right query, whether we are putting with security and for those are those all are coding best practices. But we've also implemented some best practices around source control. So for example, all of the code that we write is formatted and linted. And that is because of two plugins that we use, that is the Prettier and ESLint. Um, so we use both of them. And we have also included the relevant configuration files and dot .ignore files in the code repo for you to make use of them. We also use pre-commit hooks. Uh, so we include a package.json along with the sample app in the sample app repo, which makes it easy to set up pre-commit hooks. So pre-commit hook is essentially a script that runs whenever you run the command git commit. So before you commit the code, a pre-commit hook runs these scripts. And in case those scripts fail, your commit stops. And as a part of the pre-commit hook, we are running both the linting tool and the prettier tool, which means every time we commit our code, uh, we don't really format the code beforehand because the tool takes care of formatting the code before pushing it to the repo. So those are some of the things we are doing. And we also use GitHub Actions for our CI purposes. So we follow a particular branching strategy depending on uh, what kind of a release cycle we are in. If we are fixing a bug, there is one branching strategy. If we are rolling out updates for the next release, there is a different branching strategy. And based on that, we have configured the CI Actions um, using the GitHub Actions feature. Previously, we were using Circle CI, but we migrated to GitHub Actions. That is regarding source control. When it comes to org setup, um, particularly the most challenging one for every developer out there. So what we've done is we've created these things called as org initialization scripts. So it's a bunch of SFDX commands that run in sequence in order to set up an org. So we don't really uh, deploy the org, wait for it to deploy, then use data loader to load the data and all of that. There is a script that is included in all of the sample app gallery uh, repos that you can take a look at. What we do is we just run that script, go get a coffee, and by the time we come back, the org is up and running. So that is how we simplify our work by creating these scripts. And for data load, we use the tree API. Uh, we don't use data loader and CSV files and blah, 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 uh, because that is a lot of uh, effort and time taking process. So with the tree API, we are able to create a JSON file with all the relationships and stuff. Uh, it acts as CSV files as well. Uh, we use a tree API in order to load our data. And that command is also a part of the org initialization scripts. So explore our source control as well. Uh, look at what all files we have created. And if at all you find it useful, use it in your own projects also. All right, thank you so much, Aditya. That was amazing. And now uh, to the uh, next most ex exciting part, the roadmap of uh, many things that are coming up. There's so many interesting things and so many exciting things that we have planned for you. Uh, there are more apps coming uh, very soon. Uh, so there will be more recipe apps for things like Apex, Automation, and even more, right? And uh, some of the apps are being uh, archived. For example, Pure, Allo, and Dream Invest are a couple of apps that we haven't even spoken about today. Uh, they are going to be archived because we're not maintaining them anymore. They're a little outdated, uh, and some of the features are covered in other apps as well. Uh, but they're still available read only. Some apps have already been archived. For example, uh, Northern Trail or Outfitters, like a pretty old application. And uh, all the aura based versions of uh, some of the apps that we have, they have already been archived. It's just that they're not maintained regularly, but they're still available read only. And you can get the links of these aura apps and stuff from within the same equivalent uh, LWC applications as well. So we're very excited to bring you uh, more roadmap stuff, uh, more recipes uh, style, more standalone apps, um, you know, to help you work uh, even better and cover more features and inspire you even more. So with that, um, if you want to catch the resources very easily, find the get the resources very easily. We created a simple uh, bitly URL for you called bit.ly slash devrel guide where you can easily find uh, all the types of content that we're doing for the developer community. Uh, it could be a telegram channel, the sample gallery, the webinar, central head live schedules, and the developer blog, uh, our YouTube channel and stuff, right? So 
with that said, let's see if we have any Q and A left. And also, before we, uh, uh, I mean, we we answer some of the questions. Uh, let me remind you that we have the Trailhead Live session tomorrow uh, for the Level Up SF Dev campaign, uh, and hopefully, we'll see you guys uh, there again. Okay, let's look at a few questions and see if we can take some. So I can see one question here, Shashank, uh, which I would like to answer. I'd love to answer, in fact. Sure. Do we have any training modules or demos for the recipes individually, for all these recipes individually? That's also my favorite question. <laughs> yeah. Basically, you have a LWC developer guide from where you can learn the complete LWC uh, programming, and it uses all the examples from the recipes app. So you can yeah. refer to the LWC developer guide by, le by learning it. You can also deploy your recipes app. And for each of these recipes, you can see the, once you deploy, you can see the view source code uh, button at the bottom from where you can directly get into the specific code of that particular recipe. So in combination of your deployment, LWC and LWC developer guide, uh, it will be very easy for you to learn LWC stuff. Cool. And there is also one uh, recent latest question which is kind of related to that. Uh, there was a question is like any trailhead module or dev guide for e-bikes e uh, step by step development and stuff. So to answer that, what we're doing is work, we are working on some content things like uh, trailhead content uh, for each of these sample apps that is uh, that we are uh, soon going to uh, provide more information on. So what we're trying to do is give you like uh, like a learning module kind of a thing for each of these sample apps so that you get all the information in a very clear way. Uh, so that's one thing that's coming up on the roadmap. Yeah, I'd like to add one more point any... to this answer, Shashan. Yeah, sure. Uh, so for e-bikes apps specifically, if you go to the README document at the bottom, you can also see the possible use cases. So that README document is well documented. So you can see those use cases and start uh, using the e-bikes app with those use cases, and then it will be very easy for you to explore further. Cool. And uh, there is the other question. There is one more question as well, which kind of repeated a little. Uh, and I think I can, uh, I've covered and Satya also covered it to some extent is about uh, for Aura developers, uh, do we have any apps for Aura components? So we do have Aura versions of some of the of some of the apps, for example, Easy Spaces has an Aura version and Dreamhouse has an Aura version where you can uh, still get Aura, Aura examples. Uh, it's just that they are maintained and they could be a little outdated. At the same time, another advantage is that it, they will also help you in transitioning from Aura to LWC as well. You can look at the same use case on how it's done in Aura and how it's done in LWC and uh, make comparisons and uh, take, I mean, uh, and then do that transition from Aura to LWC. So with that, I hope uh, we were able to uh, answer ma uh, as many questions as possible. We also tried to answer the questions as much as possible as they came. So I hope, uh, uh, we were able to uh, cover as much as possible. Um, so as a next step, we also want to hear feedback from you. Um, please, there will be a survey after this webinar. Please feel free to let us know feedback on any uh, use, use requests and any uh, inputs, uh, any or, uh, new ideas that you want to see as part of the sample gallery and any other topics as well that you want to see in our webinar series as well. Uh, with that, thank you so much, everybody. You have a night day. Uh, you have a great day. Uh, you have a great week. And uh, stay safe and stay healthy and keep learning and have fun. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.